Welcome to Hofstra today. We attended the second annual Hofstra Pride bonfire to commemorate the start of the winter sports season. Field reporter Lauren Lee brought us along to the Hofstra men's basketball game against Princeton. And we sit down with two members of Dance Works to discuss their upcoming show. All that and more at and around Hofstra today. Welcome to Hofter Today. I'm Yao Bonsu. And I'm Danny DiCrescenzo. Now, yeah, we are in mid-December, so this is the apex of the hot-button debate as to whether it's too early for Christmas music. I want to know where you stand. I'm going to say it's never too early. What? See, when I'm driving down the street in July listening to Sabrina Carpenter and Nonsense Christmas. If it hits, it hits. It really doesn't matter what season it is. All right, no, no pun intended, but that's nonsense. I am of the firm believer of post-Thanksgiving Christmas music orthodoxy. You can't do it before then. It just feels weird. You see, I'm the type of person, I don't need to be in a certain season or mood to listen to a certain song. You see, for example, Taylor Swift, right? Her, her audience is mainly people who are just sad. I can be happy and listen to her music all day, so I really don't, I really don't see the problem. Counterpoint, Christmas music is timely for a reason because it's only played during a specific part of the year. That's what makes it hit different because it's exclusive. It is, it is exclusive. However, listen, if it hits, it hits. That's, that's really all I got to yeah, say about the it. The timeliness makes it hit. But what if I'm just a huge fan of the artist? Sabrina well, Carpenter is coming out with an EP on Friday, Fruitcake. Tr well, Shameless true, plug, true. but still, <laughs> that's great. But again, the, the, the genre is Christmas specific. Let me ask you, were you a Boy Scout growing up? No. Oh, you were not a Boy Scout. No, I was not. Oh, that would have been a nice segue. Anyway, <laughs> the Girl Scouts of Nassau County and Hofstra University recently collaborated for its eighth annual STEM conference. Scouts in grade four through eight took part in interactive workshops and met with some of the most prominent women in STEM. The theme was Imagine Your Possibilities. Activities included color manipulation, bridge building, and solving crimes using DNA evidence. The event is only part one of the Girl Scouts of Nassau County's plan to encourage girls everywhere to take part and grow their skills in STEM fields. Hofstra celebrated first-generation students this past Wednesday in the Student Center Atrium. First-gen students in attendance received information on campus, resources, photos, and some swag, including exclusive t-shirts. It was followed up by a first-gen family dinner in the Netherlands Corps, featuring some home-cooked meals. The program was organized by Hofstra's Office of First-Generation Support and Engagement. We hope all who attended enjoyed. Black leaders advocating for change at Hofstra hosted a week-long Black Solidarity Celebration. Five groups collaborated on this event, the African American Student Union, the Black Student Union, the Caribbean Student Association, NAACP Hofstra Chapter, and Strictly Steppin'. The organizations participated in tabling, step routine lessons, a game night, a movie night, and more. The winter sports season at Hofstra kicked off with a red-hot start, literally. The second annual Hofstra Pride Bonfire took place right next to Hofstra USA last Thursday night to commemorate the start of the basketball and wrestling seasons. MC by Herbert School Dean Mark Lukashevitz, the flames burned bright as men's basketball coach Speedy Claxton, women's basketball coach Daniel Santos Atkinson, and wrestling coach Dennis Papadatos took to the stage to introduce their teams and get the crowd excited for the season ahead. Hofstra Today field reporter Kaylin Zavala attended the event in support of the Pride and to show us a bit of the excitement, let's take a look. Right now, I am here outside Hoff USA interviewing athletes and students here at Hofstra about what they think about the bonfire and the upcoming fall season. So what are you doing here at the event? I'm here to support all of our sports, CMC, the dance squad and the cheerleading squad um, perform, and then of course see the fire be lit. So what sports do you play here at Hofstra? Men's basketball. What are your goals? Uh, our goal is just to win. Uh, we want to win the conference and win the uh, regular season. We just want to do the best version of ourselves this year. What sport do you play here at Hofstra? I'm a freshman on the softball team. What are your goals for this season? To win another CAA championship. I like the whole atmosphere here. You know, it's a little hot and everything, you know, the cold air, you know, this one giving me some warmth now. It's a good break from classes. I'm with all my friends over here. So, you know, we have some good school spirit, so I'm excited. I'm very happy to be here. 
I'm really enjoying it. It's nice and warm when it's cold out, so I like that. Um, I don't know, it's just fun hanging out around everybody. I'm really enjoying it. What sport are you most excited to see this season? Definitely very excited for basketball. We're having our home opener tomorrow, so so excited to go see that. I came here to see the fire. I ran into some friends at the same time. And so far, I've just kind of been walking around, looking at the fire, talking with people, having a good time. And that's all I could really ask for at the moment. What are some goals you have this season? Hopefully to win the CAA on, sat on Saturday and then push on as far as we can in the Nationals. What are some things you and your team do to help you guys win? Um, we train well every day with intensity. We push each other and we just enjoy ourselves every day. Looks like everyone had a good time here at the bonfire, and we wish the upcoming sports team a good season. Back to the studio. Thank you, Kaylin, for bringing us along for the fun, and best of luck to those teams in their upcoming games. Now, before we get any further into the excitement of the season, we cannot forget that we are one week away from Thanksgiving break. It'll take place from November 22nd to November 26th. Then, of course, that means no class. The university will be closed. So enjoy the break with families and friends and maybe tune into some football. Three games on the docket and charge back up for the final leg of the semester. Shaker Rake, Hofstra's largest community service opportunity, is back. On Saturday, November 18th, Hofstra's Office of Commuting Students and Community Outreach will send volunteers out to rake and bag leaves for Hempstead and Uniondale residents, some of whom cannot do so themselves. Anyone interested in taking part in the event can sign up for a morning session from 9 to 11.30 a.m. or an afternoon one from noon to 2.30. To RSVP and to learn more, head over to news at Hofstra.edu. The College of Liberal Arts and Sciences is continuing its executive speaker series. The school will welcome VP of Global Planning, Allocation, and Operation for Mark Jacobs, Thomas Craig. Craig graduated from Hofstra in 2006. He has a strong background in analytics, holding roles in inventory and finance for a variety of companies. They include Barnes & Nobles and Bed Bath & Beyond. The event takes place the Tuesday after Thanksgiving break, November 28th at 4 p.m., and it's all going down in the Guthart Cultural Theater. The next event of Hofstra's Women in Leadership Tell All series will be a coffee hour with Stella Mendez on Wednesday, November 29th from 1 to 2 p.m. at Hofstra Hall. Ms. Mendez is the Senior Managing Director at FTI Consulting. She also got her Bachelor's of Science from Hofstra in 2009 and is a member of the university's Women in Leadership Advisory Board. As a senior leader in the business and finance sectors, Ms. Mendez will discuss what professionals in those fields are looking for in their new hires. This event is free for all students and advanced registration is required on the Hofstra events calendar. Don't sweat the fall stuff. Up next, we will hear from Justin Brown with this week's national news. If I could be you, and you could be me for just one hour. If we could find a way to get inside each other's minds. If you could see you through my eyes instead of your ego. I believe you'd be surprised to see that you've been blind. Walk a mile in my shoes. Walk a mile in my shoes. Yeah, before you abuse, criticize, and accuse. Walk a mile in my shoes. Walk a mile in my shoes. Well, before you abuse, criticize. Don't stop believing. Let's take it over to Justin Brown with this week's national news. The House of Representatives passed a Stopgate GOP funding bill Tuesday to prevent a government shutdown. The bill will extend funding, which is currently set to expire Friday, November 17th, until mid-January, and will support military construction, veterans affairs, transportation, housing, and the Energy Department. Priorities that did not make this list will receive funding until February 2nd. According to a White House official, President Joe Biden is prepared to sign the bill if the Senate passes it. The bill must be signed into law by Biden before government funding expires on Friday. If not signed in time, tens of thousands of federal employees will be temporarily out of work without pay, and multiple government services would be suspended. 
Yesterday, Disney released a study demonstrating its economic impact in Florida, which is valued at $40.3 billion as it continues its battles with Florida Governor Ron DeSantis. This study accredited the billions of dollars to direct employment and spending, as well as indirect influences including supply chain and employee spending. According to Oxford Economics, Disney accounted for 263,000 jobs in Florida, and in Central Florida, Disney accounts for one in eight jobs. DeSantis has been the head of a long-running campaign to limit the autonomy of the company after the media conglomerate publicly criticized a state bill banning classroom lessons on sexual orientation and gender identity in early education. Fall is for football, feasting, family, friends, and also turkey. Turkey prices will be significantly lower this year than last. This is a thanks to a drop in cases of bird flu and the recovery of the turkey population in the U.S. The American Farm Bureau Federation examined turkey and egg prices in their latest market report and found that the average price of a turkey weighing 8 to 16 pounds was $1.27 per pound from August 2023. This is 22% lower than last year at the same time of the year. The average price for a 15-pound turkey in New York is $34.35. The nonprofit organization Children's Miracle Network Hospitals recently hosted a dance marathon fundraiser on Hofstra's campus. The event raised money for local Cohen Children's Medical Center. Hofstra today attended to show support and speak with participants. Let's take a look. Dance Marathon is a fundraiser for Children's Miracle Network Hospitals. The local one is Cohen Children's Medical Center. And 100% of the funds raised go to all the children at the hospital. It's, it's a big event, a lot of people show up. We do a bunch of dancing every hour on the hour. We have a whole lot of activities set for everybody to come do. We have a Grease theme this year, which is pretty great. Everyone's around here having fun. We have raffles over here that everybody gets a raffle when they walk in. There will be a frozen t-shirt contest, performances by Danceworks. This is the first time in years that we've actually had a Miracle Kid here with us. Her name is Maxella and she's super sweet and it's been super nice getting to actually interact with her and see who this event is helping. But it costs a dollar to sit because Miracle Kids spend their whole lives sitting in hospital beds so we shouldn't take that for granted and uh, we're standing for them and that's the whole point of this event. I am very grateful for Cohen's and I'm very grateful for Hasha for everything that I've done to raise money for Cohen's. So thank you very much. Bet your autumn dollar your five-day weather forecast is coming up next with Richie Castronovo. My name is Gary Parker. I served as a Calvary Scout and a military policeman in the United States Army for 20 years. When I was a Calvary Scout, we had a young lieutenant that came in. Great guy, but he moved on. Got promoted to lieutenant colonel, went on to Afghanistan, and I was able to keep in contact. And I'd wake up one morning, go on social media, and there's that post you don't want to see. For whatever reason, he, he took his own life. Nobody knows why he did it. And if there's something that we could have done to prevent it from happening, safe gun storage can prevent gun suicide because it's that added step to get to your firearm that might just give somebody a moment of reflection on what they're doing. As a veteran, we need to be ambassadors to people that don't have the knowledge that we have. Anytime you're not storing a weapon safely, you're putting yourself and your community at risk. Service never stops. Let's hear from Richie Castronova with this week's unbelievable weather news. Thanks, Gavin Danny. I'm Richie Castronova, and this is your five day weather forecast. Today in front, we'll see sunny skies so far. The sunshine will be covered by clouds for the rest of the day. Temperatures will reach a high of 51 and a low of 34. Thursday will bring sunny skies for most of the day. 
temperatures will reach a high of 60 and a low of 39. Now, let's take a look at how the rest of the week will take shape here in Hempstead. On Friday, you can expect mostly cloudy skies with temperatures reaching a high of 64 and a low of 43. On Saturday, you will see partly sunny skies with temperatures reaching a high of 56 and a low of 37. Sunday is looking like it will be a bit sunny and bring sunny skies throughout the day with temperatures reaching a high of 52 and a low of 35. And if you haven't taken your rookie code out of storage yet, it looks like now's the time to grab it. That's all for your five-day weather forecast. I'm Richard Castronova. Back to you, young man. Carve out the good times. Next, we'll take it on over to Alex Webb to hear the current entertainment news around Hofstra. Multiple studies have shown that marijuana can slow both driver reaction and response time, which can be really dangerous. He's here. He's here. Wait, wait, wait. Why? I can't drive. Why? Why? My. Oh. <laughs> Let's all breathe a sigh of relief and head over to Alex Webb with this week's entertainment news. The Department of Drama and Dance does it again. Hofstra's annual fall faculty dance concert will run Thursday, November 16th through Saturday, November 18th at 8 p.m. and at 2 p.m. on Saturday, November 18th and Sunday, November 19th. The concert will be held from 8 p.m. to 10 p.m. to witness pieces by Hofstra faculty choreographers. Catherine Alter, Rachel List, Livia Venever, and Heather Walden have produced a spectacular show you won't want to miss. It will be held in the John Cranford Adams Playhouse, and tickets and reservations are not required. Jingle bells all the way in New York City with first-year students at Explore Next Door's Radio City Christmas Spectacular. Taking place on November 18th, this event is open to all undergraduate first year and transfer students. Tickets are $10 and it takes place at Radio City Music Hall in Manhattan. This event was made possible by the Orientation and New Students Programs Office. This Sunday at 3 p.m., Hofstra's very own music program is putting on its student-run brass ensemble concert. Held in the Helene Fortunoff Theater, Witness students give a show packed with melodies they have been working on all semester. The show is directed by Michael Saltzman, who has been tuba and euphonium instructor since 1994. Tickets are free for all. Hofstra's own performance organization, DanceWorks, is preparing for their upcoming winter show. Fatima Moen is here in studio to speak with two members of the organization, Cami Teruya and Savannah Cameron, about what we can look forward to from the performance. Thank you, Alex. Joining me today are two members from Hofstra University's largest performance club, DanceWorks Productions. Cami Teruya and Savannah Cameron, thank you both for coming out today. Thank you so much for having us. Thank you for having us. We're so honored to be here today. Please, it's an honor for us as well. Uh, Cami, I'm going to start with you. As the choreographer and the vice president of the club, what can you share with us about the club and your experiences working with your dancers? The experience of being in this club as a whole has been absolutely amazing. Growing up, I danced my whole life, and after high school, I thought I was done. I thought I was going to stop, but I came and auditioned off of a whim because my friends told me I should, and clearly it's going very well just being able to work with so many dancers from across all majors here at Hofstra, just being able to share that experience with them, share our love of dance has meant the absolute world. Amazing, and Savannah, while um, you are the social chair, right? The social co-chair, while studying business management and your minor in dance, how has the club been an outlet for you here at Hofstra? Um, this club has done, honestly, so much for me. Like Cami was saying, meeting so many different people. I don't think we would have met if we weren't in dance breaks together. Two different majors, um, two different tracks, but I think that's the whole point of dance works is bringing a whole community together of different people, not from the same walks of life, different experiences. Um, but dance works has given me personally just so many experiences and opportunities that I didn't think I would have in college. Amazing, and I'm sure work is underway for the upcoming winter show. Um, for the either one of you, uh, can we get any inside teasers about the upcoming production? 
Yes, of course. Our show this semester is going to be so much fun. We just watched all of the pieces the other night. Everything is going amazing. They all look so much fun. They all are coming together really well. Lots of high energy, a little bit of something for everyone to enjoy. Yeah, and going off of that, if you've seen any of our banners or flyers or anything like that, they all have these this nice, pretty like tree scenery, and I think that is based off of one of my favorite pieces that we have so far. It's this really beautiful contemporary piece that really just hits where you want it to hit. It's going to make me cry. Yeah. I'm sure me as well. And my final question for the both of you, um, how does it feel to see all your work come together on stage? I mean, you know, all the costumes, the dance routines, uh, the, the early mornings and the late nights. Um, how does it feel to finally get to showcase that to, to the Hofstra community? Personally, that is one of my favorite parts about this club, being able to experience that, but also being able to see the choreographers see their piece on stage for the first time, or a first year student performing in the club for the first time, being able to watch them experience that really brings home what this club is about, about sharing our love of dance and using that to create a community here at Hofstra. Other than being a little nervous, of course, um, but showing everything that we have to offer and everything that we've been working so hard on is really such a blessing to be able to get up on the stage and share it with such amazing people that we've met through this club. Beautiful. Well, thank you both for speaking with me today. I know you're hard at work and on your upcoming winter show. To show the folks at home a bit of what they can expect from your next performances, we're going to take a look at a piece entitled Gala, choreographed by alums Anaya Cologne and Jacob Kurihara from one of your past shows. Let's take a look. Uh, check my technique. Uh, uh, coming for my technique. Uh, uh, you wanna feel my technique? Uh, uh, it's pure. Bad, bad, bad to the left. Money, money, money to the right. You can be both. Meet in the middle, dance all night. Take it all off, or just a little, if you like. It's pure. Oh. It should cost a billion to look this good. Oh, yeah. But she make it look easy, cause she got it. Check my uh, technique. You can find the one when the tempo good. Wanna touch my technique. Four, three, two pretty girls. That's my technique. Uh, that's my, that's my, that's my technique. Uh, bad, bad, bad. right and left cheek. Uh, Ideas, my dear, that's my technique. Uh, all my pretty worlds to the floor. Galliano, I'm in Galliano. Photo me pronto, I'm in Galliano. Uh, Galliano, I'm in Galliano. Photo me pronto, I'm in Galliano. Uh, Feet by four, fam. Grab your lens, cause here she comes. Frame by frame, glossy lips. Must I remind you, I'm that. Elongated, sophisticated, cover girl, we made it. Every feature soft to the touch. I make all Love the energy. I wish I was there in the front row. Thank you so much for sharing with us today. Make sure to get your tickets for the Fall Dream DreamWorks show November 20th and 21st at 8 p.m. in the John Adams Playhouse. Thank you again, Cammie and Savannah. Back to you at the desk. Wow, thank you to DanceWorks for sharing their performance. We here at Hofstra today wish you the best of luck with your upcoming show. After the break, fall aboard for your Hofstra Athletics update with John and Paul Mies. Every day, thousands of kids start vaping. And I can't let this happen to my kid. Of course, it's awkward to talk to your kids about the dangers of vaping. Hey, bestie. How sketch is me? It's hard to get their attention. Ready? Go. Yes. Look at that. Yeah, you, you, you didn't turn yours over. So if you want to talk to your kids about the dangers of vaping, you have to get it trending. Right, Backpack Kid? Let's do it. First, invite your kid to do the vape talk. Let's try this. All right. Why is he here? Yeah, I got to get it trending, no. honey. Come on. Honey, can we talk? Yeah, what's up? I see a lot of your friends vaping. Visit talkaboutvaping.org for tips on when and how to have the vape talk.
Now let's kick it over to John Apalmes with this week's spectacular sports news. Hello sports fans, I'm John Palmis, and it's time to recap a jam-packed weekend here in Hempstead for our athletic teams. Starting off at the Nets, Hofstra Volleyball went up against the Seawolves of Stony Brook on Saturday and Sunday. For the eighth time this season, Isadora Stadial led Hofstra in both kills and digs with 17 of each, while Beatriz Alves added 36 assists and 11 digs for the Pride in their match against the Seawolves. While their season did meet its end on Sunday, that didn't stop the Pride from putting up a good fight, leading the all-time series with a record of 18 to 11 and 8 to 10 in CAA play. Next, let's make our way to the pitch, where men's soccer took home their third consecutive CAA championship, leading players Elliot Goldthorpe and Teddy Baker scoring both points that took the pride to the top against the Hawks. This victory earned them the seed 14 number in the NCAA championship, where they'll play the winner of Bryant and Yale on the 19th. Now let's round the corner and make our way to the court for our women's basketball team. They commenced the home portion of their season against Wagner on Sunday. Zahima Swint powered the team with 21 rebounds, while Brooke Anya tallied the first double-double of her Hofstra career with 10 points and 11 rebounds. To close out the determining moments of this hard-fought game, Allie Knights connected on a fast-break layup to give Hofstra the three-point lead that sealed the deal, earning the win with a final score of 51-48. Finally, men's basketball kicked off their competitive season with their home opener game right here in the David S. Mack Arena versus Princeton University. Field reporter Lauren Lee went out to cheer on the pride and speak to some fans. Let's take a look at how it all went down. My name is Lauren Lee and I am here in the crowded Mack Arena for the second game of the season for Hofstra men's basketball against Princeton University. Today I'm going to be interviewing some fans, cheerleaders, and athletes to get a feel for the excitement for the start of the season. So my favorite part about coming to Hofstra basketball games is the energy, is the energy, the crowd reaction, everybody's hypeness, and then it's, it's and it's always a good game when the Hofstra men's play and women's too. It's always a good game. I'm excited to win. I'm excited for school spirit. I'm excited to show up, represent, and have a great time, you know? With eight minutes left in the first half, Hofstra takes the lead with 16 to 12. I don't live too far from here. Um, right outside East Meadow. Um, and I've been coming to Hofstra games since I was a little kid, so. Hyping up the crowd is the best part, because go Hofstra Pride! <laughs> the boys put up a good fight, but ultimately faced a tough loss with the final score of 67 Hofstra, 74 Princeton. That's it for me. I'm Lauren Lee with Hofstra Today. Thank you to field reporter Lauren Lee and to Hofstra Men's Basketball for the exciting game. Now that is all the time we have for this edition of Hofstra Today. Make sure to follow us on Instagram, Facebook, and our TikTok page at Hofstra Today. Thank you for tuning in for now. That is, that, that is all at and around Hofstra Today.